Hi guys, today I want to model Newton's cradle in MATLAB to do this simulation. Just see. Let's model this in MATLAB. I've already opened Simulink and have inserted three basic blocks that are used in uh, multi-body simscape. I have defined the gravity to be around the y-axis. I want the y-axis to face up, x-axis to be horizontal, z-axis to be perpendicular to the screen. Therefore, the first thing we need to do is to define this top body, then we define the sphere. Therefore, I need not to go to the library, Go to the body elements, select sphere, and brick solid. Let's start by brick. For the brick, I need it to have a length of uh, 0 0.2 meters. Therefore, oops, 0 0.2. Uh, so let me cancel, start again. Here, uh, I want to have a uh, 0 0.2 by 0 0.02 by 0 0.04 apply update zoom here then for the inertia is where you define if a body will be in motion it's good to give these parameters for the inertia but this one will be fixed on the it will be fixed therefore i don't need to define the inertia but i can define a graphic maybe i want it to be to be more red this one is a red green blue if you put 0 0.8 becomes more red okay this uh this is how you define a body i'm defining the parameters length along the x-axis 0 0.02 along the width along the y-axis this is the x-axis Y axis height Z is this one here along the it's along the Z axis. But basically I need my Y axis to be facing up. Therefore, if I go front, then now my Y axis is along this direction. But here you have to rotate manually to position it how you want. Basically, I want Y to face up like that, such that I want to attach my my spheres on the bottom face they will be on this bottom face therefore let me create attachment coordinate system called frame i don't need this frame we have a frame that is at the middle of the mask can see but i need a frame on this face therefore you do a new frame based on the geometry on onto this face Call it bottom B for bottom. Use selected face, save. Now you can see I have a frame on this face, but I don't need the middle one. I want to use the middle one. I don't need the middle one. I only need the bottom one. Then say okay. We can now rotate. Then we can make it longer like that. Yeah, to be similar to this. You can see, make it longer. Therefore, this B is where we are going to attach our sphere. If I rotate this sphere, it will be attached to this, like that. Yeah? We have five spheres attached to port B. B is our, our coordinate system where we attach the spheres. Now, I'm, I'm going to model the red sphere and attach it to this point. You can see red sphere to this point but other spheres will be attached on at a different location for the sphere i'll use a radius of 0 0.02 apply zoom then for the inertia i need to get inertia i'm going to use steel of 7800 density this means the inertia will be calc 
calculated from geometry with this density. Therefore, for these values, I need to select update so that I can get moment of inertia or the product of inertia. These are the values that will determine the motion. Next is graphics. Maybe let me give this one a, a blue. Let me select the blue mid one or let's use this one now is red let me give it red there you can see red is one zero zero maybe I can have a zero point two and see what happens yeah and also zero point two not yeah that's better zero point two that's how we define bodies we just need this body this one is a so there's a base, base plate, where we attach our spheres. Then this one is, um, maybe you can say it is a sphere one. Then go on the bottom here, like that. Now we need to define the joint and cable. Basically, if you simulate this, let's see what happens. You can see each network must be connected to exactly one solver block. This means uh, cancel. This means these blocks are not connected to the solver. The solver is supposed to solve. Therefore, I need to connect these ones to the solver uh, like this. Let me drag here like that. Yeah, just connect them to the solver. If you now run, we said Z axis, Y axis to be up, not Z axis. If you go front, front view, see what happens. The sphere and the brick, they are interfering. Okay, even if I have, even if there's a this line, this doesn't mean anything. This means the centroid of the sphere has been connected to the to the frame B that we, that we defined. Remember, for the sphere. The frame that is a centroid is at the center. You can see the center. It has been connected. It has been connected. You can see to the base plate on the, the frame we defined. You can see they're on the same place. If you go to the S1 sphere, you can see all of them are on the same place. Therefore, we need now to give an offset. We need to give an offset and also we need now to, to model this offset distance then need to model this cable. We are connecting the center, the bottom surface of the brick to the sphere using a cable. Therefore, let's do that now in the next. I don't need this connection. What I need is a joint. And the first joint I need is I want this ball to move freely, to rotate freely. Therefore, if you go to the library browser, if you go to the joints, I need a joint that has six degrees of freedom. I can use this one, six degrees of freedom. I can also use this one, but I'm going to use bushing. Let me use this bushing here. If you double click the bushing, you see it has six degrees of freedom. You can see. Um, these are six movement along the PX, PY, and PZ, and rotation. That's the revolute RX, RY, RZ. I want us to have six degrees of freedom. And this one is, uh, if I, let me rotate. This is the base. That will go to the base plate, and this is the follower 
but to be connected to the sphere because the sphere is supposed to move with respect to the base. The base does not move. Therefore, the B go to the base, F go to the sphere. It's a good habit to rename. This one is a joint. Joint one. That is a bushing. It's called bushing joint. It has six degrees of freedom. Next thing we said is we need to define this distance of uh, 0 0.2 meters. I need, I'm going to use a transform that is called rigid transform. Go to the same scape, mod your body, look for the transform and select rigid transform. Rigid, here. Yeah. Let me have some space. I want to rotate this also to make sure base connects to the base plate. We need not to move, we want to offset this ball downwards along y axis by a distance of 0 0.2. Therefore, double click this one. Translation I'm, I'm going to use standard axis, it is along y axis but negative 0 0.2 like that such that now this sphere one is on negative 0 0.2 along the y-axis if you now connect this let's see what happens you connect here then i connect here let's simulate and see what happens uh not this what is it Okay, let me refresh here, front view. You can see now our ball has gone downwards from the base by 0 0.2. That's what we need. Next, we need now to connect this ball to the base using a cable. We have this cable, the black shape here. Therefore, I go back to the model and you go to the library. You look for the belts and cables. We need now to define this cable. It's called belt cable edge. Also, we need to define the cable parameters. We are going to define cable properties using this block. We need to define the cable properties. Therefore, this is the cable. This we use this to define the properties. And first cable is connected to the base another cable connects to the to the sphere then these two cables combine therefore you need two of them i need to rotate this one this connects to the base and this one connects to the sphere the reason why i'm rotating then these two cables connect like that let's see okay let me Create some space here. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, like that. You can see now, this is the cable that is connecting the base to the sphere. And we need not to define these properties. Just attach this to the cable so that we define the properties. And therefore, now I'm going to leave the default as. The default ones, digital properties, I'm going to leave them as a default for now. If you run, let's see what happens. You can see we have a cable. Maybe we can make this cable blue. Let's make it blue for visualization. For the visual properties here, let me make it blue. Like that. Apply. Run. Let's see, yeah. Now we have a blue cable that connects the base to the ball. Okay. Maybe this base I can make it black. Let's see, they have a black here. All this here. 
good. Yeah, that's better. As you can see now, we have this cable connected to the ball. Next step is now to copy two bodies on left and two bodies on right. If you go back now, uh, let me organize this a little bit because I want to copy everything. I want to copy everything here twice, once, twice on this side. Let me also, I don't, this one's here. Again, let me copy everything here once and twice because i need four bodies i need two five in total therefore i have s1 i need to get s2 i need to get s3 this one to be S4 and this one to be to be S5 like that. This one's remaining a little bit. Yeah, more space. Now I need to connect. Let me delete this. Need to connect everything now. Oops. Like that. Again, connect this to this, like that. Maybe to make it more neat, we can do like this. Yeah. Uh, instead of this here, yeah, like this. Yeah, it becomes neat. Yeah. But we can have one line. Same case applies this side, like that. Uh, this is the main. This is the main, oops, sorry, uh, like that, like that, yeah. Maybe you can have them in the same line. Yeah, like that, maybe. Now, let me make my base a little bit bigger. Yeah. Now we have five bodies. This one is red. Let's give them some appearances. For the graphics, instead of red, let's go with uh, green. Apply. That becomes green. For three. S3. Let's have yellow, yellow. For the graphics, visual properties, yeah. Let's have yeah, all, all this. Apply, yeah. Let's have um, blue. Graphics, yeah. Let's give this one to be maybe blue. We can have also red. Eh? Let's have this to be red, maybe less saturated to be point, maybe seven or oh, point five. Let's go with a point five. Point three. Uh, let's have this. 
If you run this model, let's see what happens. You can see my my how many bodies, my five bodies are on the same place. It seems, let me see, what do we have still? Yeah, that's fine. Blue, that's fine. Red, that's fine. Green, that's fine. And yellow. But you see all these bodies are on the same point. All, all of them are on this point. We need to offset them such that the distance between the centers of these two bodies to be the diameter. Diameter becomes 0 0.04 because radius was 0 0.02. And you need not to use a rigid transform. Okay. Therefore, you need to put a rigid transform there. Another one here, like that. Therefore, let me just delete this so that I first of all apply the Translation along x axis, standard axis. I'm using x positive to be 0 0.04. Let's see what happens. You can see now the green has translated along x axis here yeah, by 0 0.04. Therefore, Repeat the same same process for all the bodies. Now this one becomes 0 0.04 plus 0 0.04. This one will move a total of 0 0.8. For this one, make sure B is connected to the B. Therefore, you have to rotate and put it there. There. If you now run, see what happens. Okay, my these ones are okay. My two bodies are still on the same side. Why? It's because of the sign. I'm using positive instead of negative. Therefore, I should go back here on a translation here. Instead of positive 4, now put negative so that you can go on a negative side. Same case applies here. Translation. On negative side, all you can use x negative. Also, you can do that. Okay. If now I simulate, you see, now I can get my four bodies one, two, three, four, five. My five bodies. Yeah. But from this diagram, we have to raise this first body at certain angle, you can use 30, I'm going to use an angle of 30, release it, angle of 30, then release it and see what happens. Therefore, I go back to the model here. Uh, now, let me let me go back to the model and see. Yeah. Mm, fine. We need to lift this S3 by 30 degrees. We're going to lift it like this. And I'm going to use a negative 30, meaning uh, for me to define y and x here. Yeah? I'm going to use trigonometric, that is, for the x to become L, this L, L cosine theta, and y to be, y to be L sine theta. Therefore, on this rigid transform, instead of using this value, uh, okay, uh, not that, Instead of using um, 0 0.2 as an offset, I can use um, Cartesian and use uh, 0 0.2 multiplied by a cosine of 
a cosine of pi over 6. You have to use radians. For the, uh, for the y axis, it's a negative 0 0.2. Multiply by, you multiply by a, a sine, a sine of pi over 6. Like that. Um, I need to remove an extra zero here. Apply. And okay. Let's see. You can see now what happens. My pendulum is, uh, my ball is swinging like a pendulum. But nothing happens to the rest of the balls. They're just constant static. For us not to fix this, we need, not, we need to define the contact between this, all these bodies. We need to say these bodies, they are in contact. They are just touching. Okay? Therefore, I'll go back here and use a block to define the contact. If I go to the Simscape multibody contact force here, library, 3D, I'm going to use sphere to sphere force, sphere to sphere force, uh, we have two, okay, sphere to sphere, let's select both and see, let me explain, this means what, okay, this means, th these two bodies, the first one here, means these two bodies are touching externally, you can see externally but these two bodies are touching internally okay, for this one you can use this one to model something like a, a bearing whereby the, the balls are rolling inside but for these ones, they are touching externally we need to use this, not this therefore, let's double click this and define the parameters inside Okay, this subsystem implements a contact force between two spheres. It acts to repel frames. It is like repelling the frames. Uh, for this one, you need to define the radius 0 0.02, 0 0.02. For the contact, I'm going to use. Uh, let me see for the nonlinear. I'm going to use nonlinear, not linear. Use nonlinear. And here, use for the contact stiffness. Use this one. We want these two bodies to have a very stiff contact to avoid deformation. I want us to have less damping. Eh? Let's use a very small value for the damping. You can also use 6 and use a 6. For the penetration, let's use a very small value. And here you can use two. Friction, we don't need friction, no friction. This show the way it is. We don't want friction. Okay. Now I need now to attach this one here to the bodies. This one is a S2 to S3 to this body. And this one here, this one you have to use B port like that. Again, copy this one is S1 to S2, they are touching. You can connect like that directly here to this. They are still touching, they are touching. Uh, you can make them neat, yeah, like that. Let's first of all run and see what happens. Okay, you can see now how they are moving in a chaotic way. Okay, let's first for finalize all of them. Then we need S4 to S1, like that. Then this one here. Last three, S5 to S4. Like that, they are touching, touching like that.
Okay. And let's now run and see what happens. You can see they are not moving as we uh, as we expect. Yeah, let's now figure out what's happening. And probably the reason why they are moving like this is because of the solver. Let's see now and figure out how to fix that. If you go to the modeling, if you go to the model settings. Let's see, I want to see the solver settings. I need to go to the solver. I'm using a variable step to be automatic, but let me see the maximum. For this maximum step size, I want to reduce to 0 0.001 seconds, not to be automatic. These ones can be automatic, but for the maximum, I want to make it small. In fact, yeah, yeah, let's use this one for now. Let's simulate and see whether there will be a change. Let's see. Let's now go to the front view. It is now better. Yeah. But now you have to, to try to change, to play with the parameters of the of the contact the parameters defined here you have to try to play those parameters to fine tune them and to see the so that we can get a, a stable simulation let me use only five seconds uh if i go back here okay you can see this better But you can always try to also, if you can go back to modeling, go to the solver model settings here. You can also try different types of solver and see what happens. Instead of solver automatic here, you cannot try to select this, go one by one and see the one that gives you the results that are more stable. Still you can try to use fixed step and for the for the sample time you can use maybe 0 0.005 let's see what happens when i use this sample time when using fixed step is compiling it will give it some time to compile go back to simulation you can see i prefer the other one I prefer the, the variable one here. I prefer the variable one. It's more accurate than the fixed. It depends on the type of model you are simulating. Yeah. You have to understand how to use this solver. Yeah, I prefer this variable step. Lastly, you can you can reduce number of you can make your model become a little bit neat by let me show you how you do it you can form sub uh, systems like that select like that in fact let me also select this do a subsystem here like that let me uh, let me undo yeah, that's how you, you can create subsystems. Let me do this only. Yeah. You can call this one to be body one. Do the same thing here. But you have to make sure you don't highlight this. Therefore, uh, you can select everything again. Be careful. Also remove it. Like that. Do body two. This becomes more neat and less, uh, yeah. Can also do like that, make it more organized. Yeah, I think that's okay. Yeah, you can do the same thing 
put the rest of the system call this one to be this one was a as as three you can call it sphere sphere three yeah do the same thing to the rest then if, if you open this ones instead of having connection one here and this one here you can say this one is a this one is a base because it is a base of this rigid transform this one is a follower follower like that yeah i, I prefer making my model at least neat and organized you can see now you can make it bigger like that if you want yeah also this can make it bigger a little bit it becomes neat and easy to follow okay uh, then you can go back let me do one final simulation if you want to get the various force you can use out to get maybe forces contact forces if you are interested in getting those parameters okay let's do this simulation as we wind up yeah thank you stay tuned in my next video i will now model a hydraulic system that is amazing let's meet in the next video to model a hydraulic system thank you and stay tuned for more